Hey everybody, get on in here. It's time for tea party. It's time for our daily tea party. Come on in. I've got my cup of Earl Grey right here. Please share our videos. You're so sweet to do it. Come on in. We've been uh, having great fun with our videos this summer. There's my brother-in-law. I'm going to have to make him a moderator. He's in here so much. Anyway, come on in. It's time for, uh-oh. I did some, hit, I grabbed a hold of my cord. I need to wrap that around there one time so I don't do that again. So come on in here when we get about 100 people. We shall draw a topic out of our wise old owl. Yep. So come on in. This morning we talked about being prepared. And this afternoon, who knows what we're going to talk about. Whatever the Holy Spirit decides is, is on our mind. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to draw one. I got one right here. And I'm going to put that back there. I just got through emptying my dishwasher and putting all my dishes away. I wiped down all my counters this afternoon. Just detail cleaning my kitchen a little bit. Getting a head start on next week. So here we go. This is good. This is good. There's no right way to stir a pot. <laughs> you know, stirring pot, stirring a pot can have lots of connotations. It really can. You know, in the South, we have an analogy which is, is quite, quite ugly talking about stirring a pot, keeping trouble mixed up all the time. That's what gossip does. Gossip stirs the pot. Gossip, gossip is terrible. And when we gossip, we're stirring a pot, stirring up the, you know what, keeping things messed up, keeping things. And you know, forgiveness, forgiveness helps us to mend that and, and nipping Shutting our mouths, thinking about how people, how we'd want people to talk about us makes us stop stirring up this stuff. But then the other part of it is about a spoon that I just put away in the drawer. And I could go get that spoon and show you. I think I'm going to go get that spoon and show you the spoon. I hope I can do it without making you all sick. But I'm going to try. I'm going to go get the spoon out of my drawer because I just put it in the door, put it, put it away from the dishwasher. Uh-oh, getting hung up again. Okay, I'm going to go get the spoon. Here we go. Going to my kitchen. This looks like we're having an earthquake, but we're not. Just me walking and the phone shaking in my hand. Where's I got the spoon. Going back to the studio. That's my kitchen in the background. It's pretty and clean. Makes me happy. Okay, let me put the phone back where it goes. Okay, let's see if this works. So, I like to pick up things at yard sales. And I got this at a, at a thrift store. I think this was at the Habitat for Humanity. I found this cup. And you know we have we have forgotten to drink, so let's take a take a little sip, blow it. 
because mine's really hot. Yeah, we got a lot of green air around here. We live in a lush sort of rainforest. So this spoon, let me show you this spoon. This is an old spoon that I got at a yard sale. But the spoon grabbed my eye when I saw this. You see the spoon? See how it's worn off right here? See how it's all worn off on this side? And you can tell it was held by a right-handed person and every morning she stirred the oatmeal. You just, you just, you just know that when you look at it. Every morning she stirred the oatmeal with the same spoon, you're probably using the same pot, and she stirred it round and round. The consistency of this spoon was from a person who loved her family. Yep, she loved her family. She did it every morning the same way, very same way. She stirred the pot and she stirred it round and round and round. Now, when you think about stirring a pot, you never think about you could wear a spoon down, but that's the consistency. I love geology. And you, I've got a rock out in my garden that has a hole in it, a hole dripped in it, a hole dripped in it, drip, 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 drip. And it wore a hole in this rock from the consistency of the drip, drip, drip. This spoon was worn, one edge was worn off from the consistency of stirring the porridge, the oatmeal, the cream of wheat, whatever it was they ate every morning for breakfast. It was done with a loving hand with this spoon. And it makes me happy to own this spoon. If it, if it were, um, we have another spoon that Robert found at the ocean that is is a smaller spoon than this. It doesn't anywhere come near to this spoon. But this is the consistency. Your routines are consistency. Gravy is a staple of food in, in, in the South. Gravy is a staple, so it could have very well been gravy. But it was something that was done every day with this spoon. This spoon was washed and put away and picked up again and again and again. This this was a one. I don't even know what kind of silver it is, but it makes me happy. It makes me happy. I got it at a yard sale, and it's it's a wonderful spoon. So, what are your spoons going to say about you one day? You know what? What are your spoons going to say? Are they going to say that you were consistent in, in your everyday actions? Or are they going to say that you didn't use it much? You didn't use it much. So let your routines, let your daily routines. It's not pewter. It's not pewter. It's just an old piece of plate Silver plate. That's all it is. An old piece of silver plate. And it is just powerful. Don't pay any attention to any bad people on here. Don't pay any attention to them. Ignore them. I'll block them later. So consistency, just like losing weight, being consistent, stirring, <laughs> stirring gravy in a cast iron. And when you've got one of these from one of your your, your parents, one of your grandparents, one of your great grandparents, if you've got something like this from one of them, that says a lot. You know, I believe I'm here today because I had a grandmother who prayed for me every day, who prayed for our family every single day. 
I had a grandmother that did that. And she's the one that taught me the power in a shiny sink because after she would get through washing dishes in her sink, and she had one of these old-timey sinks that was cast iron, and it had sideboards on it. It was like its own cabinet. And every day when she would get through shining, when she would get through washing dishes and putting all the dishes away, she would take her dishcloth, her, her drying rag, and she would wipe out her kitchen sink and, and dry it and get it ready because she had hard water and she would get it ready for the morning. She would get it ready for the morning. So uh, the consistency in what we do, the consistency of what we do every day changes our lives. One habit can turn into several other habits strung into a routine and those routines turn you into automatic pilot. And there's nothing better than being on automatic pilot. You don't have to think. You just get up and do. Your feet hit the floor with your morning routine. Before you've gone, the most important routine of the day is your before bed routine. But pick your clothes out for tomorrow. Lay them out where you get dressed in the morning. When you get up in the morning, make your bed, go to your bathroom, swish and swipe. Swish and swipe your bathroom, get your clothes on, wash your hair, do whatever you got to do in the kitchen, I mean in the bathroom, and then take a load of laundry, put it in the washing machine, bam, you got it done. You got it done. You know, ha psychologists tell us it takes three weeks to establish a habit. They don't know us. This is why we practice a habit for a whole month. I give you about a 10 day grace period because I know what you do. If you miss a day, you throw the baby out with the bath water. Now, I give you a grace period, jump back in as if you didn't miss a day. And then by the end of the month, you will have established that habit. It's amazing what habits can do. And there's more than one way to stir a pot. But when you stir the pot the same way every day, you get this. And that's the consistency. That's the consistency of your habits. And other consistencies may see you losing weight if you're doing less than 30 grams of carbs a day. It's You're just going to be blown away by what... The consistency of doing the same thing every day. And when you get your routines done, that frees you up to do whatever you want to do. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't have written four books if I had a messy house because it would have just been keeping, pulling me away from what, what I'm supposed to be doing. So folks, drink up with your tea. Blow on it if you need to. And if somebody complains to you about how you stir your pot, tell them you're doing it the same way you always have. And just keep stirring. But don't stir gossip. <laughs> I love you all. I will see you tomorrow uh, afternoon because we don't have um, a morning show because of church. So everybody, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon for tea time. Love you all. Bye.